Okay. Uh, as I said earlier, guys, we're all here today. Well, Joel, I'm not sure you stepped out for just one second, but um, it's been a while since we've all been here. So we're excited uh, to be back with you for our low carb webinar. Today, we're going to be talking about gut health. And this is very important. Um, I'm excited to learn from Dana and hear some things that she has uh, to share with us. You know, she is working with clients who are on these very similar journeys as many of you, many of us. Um, trying to figure out how to stay healthy, how to enjoy food, um, and to have a good relationship with food, I think is a big important thing too. So, um, and as you all know, gut health, I think they're starting to call the gut kind of the second brain. Um, so very, very important. And um, I'm just, I'm excited to hear from you. So say hi when you guys uh, are on here, whether you're on Facebook or if you're on YouTube, wherever you are, say hello. So we know that you're here and that you're seeing this, feel free to ask questions while we're live. We want to answer as many of those as we can. So, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Dana, share all of your wisdom with us today. Good morning, everyone. So we are talking about gut health and why do our why does our gut health improve when we go lower carbohydrate? Carbs can be okay for our gut, but individually sometimes we just need to pay attention to what carbohydrates are we eating. Grains and legumes or like beans and peas can sometimes be really hard on our gut lining. And when we eliminate those or significantly reduce, we're lowering our carbs and we're taking away in grains such as wheat. There's a protein called glidin in wheat, the gluten protein, and that can be very inflammatory to many people's, the lining of our gut. So kind of stem to stern all the way from our mouth, all the way down to the tail end. Gluten can be inflammatory and some people respond very nicely when they remove that. So wheat is a grain corn, you know, everybody it's summertime in the Midwest here. We love our corn on the cob but corn is a grain and that can really wreak havoc on our gut. It is a very highly allergenic food, meaning it can cause some allergic reaction, not necessarily hives, but how about gut pain, diarrhea, constipation? It is just not easily digestible. Um, corn, wheat, um, even oats as a grain that can be really hard on our gut. Um, you can maybe see as you go along in your journey, when you're able to add some carbohydrates back in, if you go an organic gluten-free oat, your gut might tolerate that better. But for the most part, I encourage people to go and do a grain free diet, which quite often means lower carb. There are certain grain-free options that people eat that are higher carb, but I just really find that removing the grains going lower carb does help heal the lining of our gut. And like Leslie was saying, the gut is our second brain. 70% of our immune system is in our gut. And we have a nerve in our gut it's called the vagus nerve and it travels from our gut all the way up to our brain. And guess what? That nerve is like a highway for bacteria going back and forth. So what we put into our mouth is going to determine how we think, how we feel, our mood, how we sleep. So if we want to feel better, think better, sleep better, let's really pay attention to the health of our gut. And even if you can just start by removing processed foods, that is, that would be a great first step. Next step is to remove those grains, the, the high carb grains. And I would be curious to see if you notice a difference in how you feel gut wise, brain, even joint wise, when we remove that gluten protein, a lot of people report that their joint pain goes away significantly. Okay, guys, um, as we are talking today, 
feel free to ask questions for Dana, because I know that many of you are, are um, wondering or you have some questions. We get so many questions about foods and, and these types of things. So feel free to ask those in the Q&A if you are on Zoom. Um, this is so good. I, I'll just quick story for me. Years and years, years ago, I had a lot of stomach issues. I had been diagnosed with Crohn's disease. Um, in fact, uh, actually in college and, um, years later, you know, uh, getting married, starting, you know, to go through, um, having children, I started to become more conscious of what I was eating or what I was putting in my body. It didn't necessarily feel comfortable putting drugs in my system, uh, that I didn't know a lot about. And so I kind of went down this rabbit hole of, okay, what can I be doing naturally to help this problem that I was having? Um, and through meeting the correct people and um, working with, you know, Dr. Saunders, et cetera, come to find out uh, I could not tolerate grains. I couldn't tolerate wheat. And that was giving me the problems that, you know, were manifesting into my diagnosis. And so by removing um, the grains, my whole body changed. You know, I no longer say that I have that, I, you know, those, that was just some symptoms that I was dealing with. And um, I saw a big change in my body. I was no longer dealing with the inflammation and, and I had to get rid of grains for a year um, before I could slowly try to reintroduce them again. But I just, in my own life have seen the benefit to uh, being careful with those. I was the girl who was eating sandwiches like for every meal because I was healthy, right? right? I was putting lettuce and vegetables on them. So it was healthy. Right. I, we just kind of grew up in that world. Like that was just what we did. And, um, and now I can tolerate sourdough, you know, pretty well. I can't do a lot of sourdough, but I just know I can't do it the way that I used to be able to. Um, so anyway, just a little side rant there. I definitely have seen the benefit of, of that. Um, Leslie, did you ever get tested for celiac disease? So I actually, I'm trying to remember that I am not sure. Um, but when I did kind of, uh, like a food sensitivity type thing, Dr. Saunders, many of you know him, uh, he had recommend I do, uh, what am I trying to say? Where you slowly eat like four foods You're like forever. Diet. Yes. And which sounds great. Right. Except when you have to do it, it's just not yeah. fun. And so I remember being like, just give me the test. I just want to do the tests, you know, whatever. Yeah. And um, so I did kind of a food sensitivities test. And on that, it said uh, I was moderately uh, allergic, not allergic, but sensitive to wheat. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it probably, if I was celiac, may have shown up differently. I'm not totally sure. Um, but moderate was good enough for me. I also had a uh, milk protein that I was moderately allergic to as well as nightshades. And yeah. so, which is, which when I think about it is very interesting because I used to crave tomato, oh. like pastas and salsas and all of those things. And so I was eating abnormal amounts of that too. So well, that's, that's kind of interesting. Um, just because so many people will go get tested, their doctors will do the antibody testing for mm -hmm. celiac disease. Not necessarily will they go down and do the um, endoscopy and get the biopsy, which would show the actual fl the flattening of the tissue. But even if you come back negative for everything and you are still having symptoms, you're having brain fog, gut health problems. So constipation, diarrhea, a mixed version of that, um, joint pain, you can still be sensitive to those gluten proteins. So just listen to your body. Even if your doctor says, no, gluten is fine. Really. It's just so it, it's just so highly allergenic, especially with um, the chemicals that are sprayed on wheat. And it's just evolved. They've modified the wheat so we can grow a lot of it to feed a lot of people. Um, and our, our bodies just have not adapted as fast as our farming practices to be able to handle um, this type of food. So, and like Leslie said, she can have sourdough maybe every once in a while. We have a fantastic sourdough bread here in Sioux Falls. Um, it's three ingredients. It's wheat, water, and salt. And I can also eat that. It's amazing, but I don't do it often. 
but just pay attention to your symptoms and your body. Uh, another thing I noticed a few years ago, I started to get um, like plantar fasciitis and I thought, what am I like, is this what happens? Am I getting old now? And I just have these things that are starting to come up. Uh, and then I revised my diet actually went pretty extreme, like whole 30 mm. and it went away. Awesome. It all went away. And so I, and even, um, you know, through knee injuries and things like that, it is, I've just been amazed at the way the body responds to food. Mm -hmm. Um, the pains that you feel from eating things you shouldn't have been eating will manifest as joint pain. And I just really, I mean, I'd heard that, but until you experience it for yourself, it's like, you don't even grasp how important it is. So mm -hmm. just, I'm a full of a, a strong believer in the power of food. So this is very good. And I'll stop talking because I feel like I have a lot of stories about all of this, but it's no, so good. That's interesting though. I mean, you had an itis plantar fasciitis, anything itis means inflammation. Yes, we could take ibuprofen and all the meds in the world, but we're just putting a bandaid over that inflammation to cool it down. Anything we put in our mouth becomes us. It becomes our tissue. So let's cool that inflammation down with food, anti-inflammatory food. And a very good place to start is with um, removing those grains because then your gut heals and then your other tissues can heal as well. So my question okay. to you is if you're removing food, what are the gut healing foods you should be eating to help speed that along or basically restore? So there's two folds, one removing, but then what do you eat instead? Right. So remove the, the top five things that I like to remove um, would be like the grains, wheat, corn, soy, milk, some, so dairy and eggs, those would be the things that I would remove to start. Um, but then as far as what is going to heal your gut, that is so individual. Um, and so like what Leslie was saying, yes, you can start out with the very strict elimination diet, but that is tough. And I have a client who actually decided instead of, well, I can't eat this, this, and this, the things that she's eating, she went to like a more carnivore type of, um, nutrition eating plan. So really it's been meat and eggs for her for several months. And she has finally been relieved of her joint pain and a lot of her gut issues. So that can be challenging, but people do it. And sometimes you just get to a point where you're like, I, I just need help. I need to feel better. So the carnivore diet um, can be challenging to navigate, but does work pretty well for people rather than following all the rules of your standard elimination diet. You just know, okay, I can have any meat and any eggs and, and go from there. Um, and the, the supplement, uh, if, you know, supplements are just that to supplement when we need them, but I really like, um, glutamine for, uh, gut health and it's cheap. And as long as that's the only ingredient in the product you're getting, I mean, you can get a big tub of glutamine for probably around $20 and it'll last you forever. It does not taste good swirl it in some water. And a lot of times I would just take it with my morning supplements, but glutamine is a fantastic food to start healing your gut, um, and collagen to any, whether you use a flavored collagen or an unflavored collagen and gelatin. Um, so like a bone broth and when I'm making bone broth, sometimes I'll even add a tablespoon or two of gelatin to my bone broth, like the powdered gelatin. So yeah, good question. Great idea. I know Leslie used bone broth for a long time, didn't you? I think I've done all the things for my gut. <laughs> yeah. But Did when you, you have a scary diagnosis, yeah. Yeah. you know, you either, uh, you either work hard to figure it out and you do all the things mm -hmm. or you don't. And I was just, I was going to do everything. And I really did a, a deep dive into those types of things and it made a big difference. So. Yes. We've done lots of bone broth here. Um, it's good. Actually times are, 
I'm sorry. What was that? Did you do glutamine? So uh, yes, I use that as a, a supplement. Um, mm-hmm. And I was just thinking actually this morning as you, and as you brought this up, I usually mix my um, collagen with my the kind of a medical grade protein drink that I use. I'm actually out. I had a chocolate flavor that mm-hmm. I really liked and I'm actually out. So I need to get more. And I like the idea of adding the gelatin to your broth. Mm-hmm. I never thought about doing that. And so uh, lots of, lots of good ideas back in the day when I was really trying to better my health, I feel like so many of these things were not actually available. Like you can buy bone broth now, who, who would have thought, you know, even five years ago, you couldn't do that. I had to, I had to slave over the stove for hours, making my own. <laughs> things are just a lot easier now. And so if it's something that you're interested in guys, though, there's so many things available to you to do this. When I first tried to eat gluten-free, it was like uh, your options were like really terrible tasting cardboard crackers from the store. Like, oh, you're gluten-free now. Here's your junk aisle. You know, like there wasn't anything good or, you know, even real, I feel like at that point. So things are just so much easier. Um your the bone broth. So it's awesome that it's available. It can be a little bit pricey for, you know, people watching their grocery budget. Um, like at Costco, I think you can get a six pack for $16, which is really, I mean, that is a nice price, but you could get an eight pack of chicken stock for $13. And I will just add to my chicken stock, make my own bone broth by adding, you know, I do as much as up to three tablespoons per um, box, three or four tablespoons, because a tablespoon of gelatin, like the powdered gelatin, and I'm not talking Knox gelatin. I like um, Great Lakes has a good gelatin brand, Further Foods, um, even Vital Proteins, they have gelatin. So a tablespoon has nine grams of protein collagen in it. And same thing with bone broth. If you buy bone broth from the store, it will have nine grams of protein per cup. So you can just make your own. I buy chicken stock and then I'll add a scoop of gelatin to that. So, but make sure it's hot and you need to whisk it because otherwise it clumps and it doesn't taste very good. Do you buy certain brand? Of the gelatin? No, the bone broth. Um, so that I would just buy like the Kirkland organic chicken stock, but honestly you could go whatever grocery stores or whatever stock is available at your grocery store, check the ingredients, Yes. make sure there aren't any seed oils in, you know, the three C's corn, cotton, canola, soy, safflower, sunflower, make sure those oils are not in your broth. Um, but pretty much any chicken broth, chicken stock would be fine. And then just add in your powder. Okay. We do have a question here from Barbara. Let's see. I was told the oatmeal cereal in the morning with all natural peanut butter and cinnamon. I have to reduce my cholesterol and glucose levels. Is this okay? Sure. You know, oatmeal has been touted for the longest time as a health food. Today, still, even the doctors I worked for a year ago were saying, eat oats, it's going to help with your cholesterol. Well, oatmeal, when once we swallow those oats, it's going to turn to sugar right here. And if we want to reduce our blood sugar, I don't, it does not make sense to put sugar into our bodies. So the peanut butter and cinnamon are perfect. I would not do the oats. Of course, always check with your provider before changing your nutrition plan, but oatmeal is going to convert to pure sugar. When your metabolism is healed and your glucose levels levels have stabilized, maybe you could do a quarter cup of oatmeal every once in a while, but it is just, it's really, really hard on your blood sugars. And there's no, you know, if you do peanut butter and oats, That is a carb and basically a fat. Peanut butter has a smidge of protein, but to start your day with only carb and fats, for most people, that's going to set you up for a day of cravings. The peanut butter, like I said, that does help with cravings a little, 
but I would rather have you do um, like a tablespoon or two of peanut butter. Um, you could just lick it off the spoon, but measure it, of course, because it can add up awfully fast. Uh, and how about a couple of eggs? And then, but your question is, but I have to reduce my cholesterol. Well, total cholesterol isn't as important as your triglycerides. I would be curious, Barbara, um, does your doctor want you to reduce your triglycerides or is it your total cholesterol? Because if your triglycerides are a part of that, by lowering your sugar, you're going to lower your triglyceride level. So that's just something to be aware of um, with oats, even though the American Heart Association still has their stamp of approval on those oats. It's a lot of marketing and politics that goes into, um, into that process. So good question. Okay, another question here from Mary. If I cut out oatmeal and the occasional oat bread, how am I going to get fiber into my system to not be constipated? There you go. Good question. Um, constipation can be a problem when you go low carb, but I believe Dr. Saunders says those non-starchy vegetables are okay in phase one. Am I right in saying that, Leslie? Yep. Yep. So you can get fiber from any of your non-starchy vegetables and make sure you're drinking enough water. Um, I should review the non-starchy vegetables. So those are any of the greens like broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, um, any lettuce is okay as long as your stomach tolerates that, asparagus, artichokes, any vegetable really that's not peas, potatoes, and corn are going to be a fantastic way for you to get fiber. And um, water, like I said, and make sure you're replacing your electrolytes. Even at, you know a cheap electrolyte replacement is going to be take a swig of pickle juice because when our electrolytes are out of balance, you will get constipated from that, um, especially as you're transitioning into a lower carb way of eating. It's good. Okay, mm -hmm. another question here from Carol. How do you feel about oat milk? Mm, good question. Very trendy right now. Mm -hmm. it is so trendy. Fantastic <clears throat> marketing. I say no thank you to oat milk. You know, Oatly has got their name out there and it is the thing to drink according to their marketing. But look at the ingredients in there and um, gosh, do it. Seven, is, are there seven grams of sugar? I would need to double check. Each oat milk has a different amount of sugar but um, no thank you uh, to the oat milk. Um, I prefer to do an almond or a coconut milk. Um, you can get you know, healthier versions of almond milk where there aren't the fillers and the gums and everything. Um, but then my question is, you know, what are you drinking the milk with? Um, best Cocoa option. Pebbles. Oh. Cocoa pebbles. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I did. I did like those, maybe even Fruity Pebbles too, but <clears throat> yes. Um, yeah. What are you drinking the oat milk with? And you know, if it's a tablespoon or two in your coffee creamer, don't throw it away, but I would not be drinking an eight ounce glass um, with, with a meal. I, I really don't feel there's any health benefit to that. Well, you also have to decide where do you want to get your carbs? If you, do you want to drink your carbs? You know, is that what you want to do with your carbs? Cause I personally don't, if I'm going to have carbs, I want it to be substance and food. Right. Um, so you just got to kind of make those decisions, but these are really good questions, you guys. So keep them coming. Uh, if you have questions on Facebook, feel free to ask there too. Well, just a couple more minutes, I think here, and then we'll wrap up. Um, this is so good. Lots of good information here today. So uh, we do have a question here from Kathy. I've been healing my gut and reversing my diabetes since March. I have always had constipation and diarrhea, irritable bowel. I take IbuGuard, probiotics, prebiotics, and enzymes. I am some better, but still struggle with normal stools. I take Benefiber. I only eat eggs, chicken, fish, above ground veggies, some nuts, and cheese. I've lost 60 pounds since August. I have had all kinds of tests, but still have pain on my left side. Any ideas? Hmm. 
Well, congratulations on your success. 60 pounds, that is amazing. You are on your road to better health. Um, so high five for all of your hard work. Um, and it sounds like you've really got your nutrition nailed down. Um, the two biggest offenders that I would see causing gut irritation would be the dairy and nuts. Um, I would try an elimination of those for at least two weeks and see how you feel. Um, also check your probiotic. A lot of probiotic has dairy in it. So make sure that it does not contain dairy. Um, and the Benefiber, if you're having diarrhea, I, I don't know that I would do Benefiber. Of course, check with your um, gastroenterologist or whichever provider you're using, but um, I'm not sure that that's benefiting you. Um, and the prebiotics too, you know, how long have you been taking all of these things and did you start everything at once? So if we can kind of cut back slowly to see, okay, what is causing the problem here? Um, and then reintroduce. So consider starting with the dairy and the nuts, uh, cheese and nuts. I would take those away first possibly the Benefiber, and then really look at your pre and probiotic, because for some reason, your gut still just isn't happy. Um, even though you're doing so many good things, uh, just really consider, let's start with the dairy and nuts. Um, I actually have a friend who has Crohn's disease as well. And after years and years and years, finally went and did some testing and found out it was nuts giving her all of her problems, mm -hmm. which she said, she was very, very, uh, you know, would appear to be very healthy and ate. Mm -hmm. She was very careful with her foods, but nuts were just wreaking havoc on her body. So, and then let us know, Kathy, keep us updated on how this goes mm -hmm. because we love to learn too, and this may help someone else. So, and I would add to Kathy too, see if there's any artificial sweeteners in anything. I don't know if you're using a creamer with artificial sweeteners or drinks, because that can wreak havoc in your mm -hmm. gut too. Any, any of this aspartame, any Splenda, Stevia can some for some, mm -hmm. but yeah, just check to see if there's any artificial sweeteners that will destroy your gut. Yes. Good point. Some people have issues with vegetables too, like it's like we might end up with zero foods left to eat here pretty soon, but <laughs> yeah, but eliminate each of those for a while and to see if any of them are the cul culprit. So, and of course I need to give a shameless plug to our um, digestive enzyme, probiotic, prebiotic, healthy gut support. We've gotten a lot of really good feedback on this product and it's got, um, yeah, it's really good for all that, what we're talking about digestion and um, it has some fiber in there as well. So, and all of our supplements come with uh, 365 day money back guarantee. So try it. If it helps, great. If not, we'll refund your money. And so it's worth trying, but you can get that on bartonnutrition.com for information on our supplements <laughs> as Leslie just posted in the chat. And use the coupon code uh, webinar25 to save 25% while you're there. So. All right, guys, this has been awesome. Very good webinar. Uh, we appreciate all of you coming back. We will be here again in two weeks. So to get more information, head to bartonwebinar.com. If you haven't registered for this free webinar, you'll find more information there. So make sure you do that. And then Dana, can you give us your links as well? So if we want to stay in touch with you and watch all of your fun uh, food prep and grocery hauls and all of that kind of stuff, where do we find you? Yes. Head over to danacushinghealth.com is my website and you'll see links to my Facebook and Instagram. On Instagram, it's dana.cushing.health. Facebook is Dana Cushing Health. And feel free to join our Stop Sugar Secrets group if you would like. Um, it's just a group that provides support um, as we're all on our journey to be eating less sugar and heal our body. Awesome. All right. Okay, guys. So good. Thank you so much. We will see all of you soon. Awesome. Have a good Bye. day. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.